inshallah speak about a very special marriage uh, the marriage between the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and khadija radiyallahu anha and we will be going over certain pertinent points regarding this blessed marriage now at times people ask why would a woman who was very rich Khadija was so rich amongst the people of Quraysh that sometimes when they would send their caravan for trade half would be hers so why would she marry a man like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who had nothing financially he had nothing why would the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his charisma with his looks with you know everything about him young man marry a woman who was 25 years his senior because the criteria written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yanduru ila suwarikum wa adsamikum that Allah doesn't look at your features Allah doesn't look at your bodies because Allah is the one who gave you the features Allah is the one who gave you the bodies walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa amalikum but Allah looks at your hearts and your actions that is the criteria by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges it doesn't look at your wealth it doesn't look at your bank balance because Allah is the one who gives you the risk it doesn't look at your feature because he made you he looks at your actions it looks at the tenderness of your heart what kind of individual are you so khadija radiyallahu anha before she married the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was known as tahira wa tayyibah that was her laqab tahira wa tayyibah pure one clean one and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was known as before he was granted prophethood as sadiq al amin the actions were good and their hearts were clean and this is why if you have a good spouse a good partner they will be with you through thick and thin if they have a good heart if they have good actions if they fear allah they will be with you through thick and thin listen look at this the first revelation descends the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in ghari hira jibril descends he squeezes the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam three times and then he makes him read the message of allah is not clear what really happened so he goes where does he go to his uncle hamza was alive abu talib was alive he doesn't go there does he go to abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu his best friend he doesn't go there where does he go he goes to his wife because allah says li taskunu alayha man finds solace by his wife man finds comfort by in his wife have you ever noticed that often women are very they can be quite emotional but in your most difficult time when you are finding it difficult your rock is your woman you think how uh, how did it happen she is your rock so he goes to who he goes to khadija radiyallahu anha his wife so he goes to khadija and he said khashitu ala nafsi i'm fearing for my life zammiluni zammiluni message of allah was trembling shivering and she gives him a cloth and then she asks him what happened what happened he tells her what happened what did she say yeah right that's what happens to guys who hang around in caves leaving their family that's what happens what are you chilling out in caves for you should be here at home what did she say see one of the worst spouses are these 
that when the other spouse has a difficult time, they want to rub it in. They want to take advantage. They want to stick the boot in when they're on the ground. These are the worst of spouses. You know, you come back from home, work, and you say to your wife, oh, I've got a terrible headache. She goes, you don't know what headache I've got. You come home and the wife has been struggling with the children. She said, I had a torrid time. He ain't listening. You say, you don't know what torrid time I had at work. You ain't listening. You could say the exact same thing in 20 minutes, in an hour, and it will resonate. But why do you have to say it there and then? Because you ain't listening. Listen to the woman who was listening. She hadn't prepared a talk regarding the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said, She said, by Allah, Allah will never forsake a man like you. Allah will never forsake you. How can Allah forsake a man who reconciles ties? Who helps those who are nobody? Taksibul ma'doom. Taksibul ma'doom means from the word Adam, who are nobodies, who are zeros in society. Wa And he carries the burden of those who have heavy burdens. And this is why Khadija radiallahu anha was special in the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu once asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, who is the most beloved person to you? He said, Aisha. He said, no, I'm not asking about the women. Who out of the men is the most beloved to you? He said, Abuha. He didn't say Abu Bakr. He said, her father. Her father is the most beloved person to me. He expressed his love for his wife. Somehow now today, we have this warped perception of ghira, ghairat. We take it from our customers. It's got nothing to do with deen. And it's often used, let me make this clear, it's often used as to beat the misses and the women folk down. I'm bari gherat mande. What you are gherat mande? You are more gherat mande than the Messenger of Allah? You are more gherat mande than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You are more gherat mande than Allah and His Rasul? So he says, Abuha. He says, her father. Look at the words of Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha says, out of all the wives of the Prophet sallallahu the one I was most jealous of was Khadija. All the others were alive and there was only one who had passed away that was Khadija. The, the amount of time the Messenger of Allah would mention her, she said, I, I, would, I, I would be jealous of her. She said, one day there's a knock on the door and the Messenger of Allah recognized that it was Hala the sister of Khadija. And the Messenger of Allah said, Allahumma hala. Allah, let it be hala. Aisha radiallahu anha says, Ghaira, my ghaira got the better of me. And I said to the Messenger of Allah, he said, oh Messenger of Allah, when will you stop remembering this old woman of, of Quraysh, Hamra Shidqeen, meaning that she had red, red gums, meaning that she was so old that her teeth had fallen out. Today, Allah has given you better than our message of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu got angry and he said, oh, oh Aisha, Allah never gave me better than Khadija. When everybody disbelieved in me, she believed in me. When everybody shunned me, she took me in. When everybody deprived me, she assisted me with her wealth. And she's the only one that I have children with. She was a passed away. But this is the love that the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for her. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never forgot her ihsan. Remember this. Good people never forget the ihsan of good other people. If you are a person who forget the ihsan of your parents, you got a problem. If you are a person who forgets the ihsan of the, of the people who have done good to them, you're not a good person. 
Aisha radiallahu anha says that the message of Allah, every time he would go somewhere, he would make dua for Khadija. He would send blessings upon her. He said long after she had passed away, the Prophet sallallahu when he would sacrifice an animal, he would give it to the family of Khadija radiallahu anha. Never he forgot Khadija radiallahu anha. Why? I'm telling you why. Because she was with him through thick and thin. For better and worse. For hardship and ease. She was on his side. You know the dua where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina qurra ta'ayunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqeena imama. Oh Allah, grant us from our spouses that which is the coolness of our eyes and from our children, of offspring, that which is the coolness of our eyes and make us the imams of the muttaqeen. I swear when the Prophet ﷺ looked at this woman who was 15 years his senior, he couldn't take his eyes off her. Not necessarily because she was beautiful, but because of the love that he had for this woman. She stuck with him through thick and thin. When the Messenger of Allah and the, and the people of Quraysh were boycotted, the Bani Hashim were boycotted. They said to Khadija, you don't have to stay with the Prophet Sallallahu They stayed there for two years in that valley. Sometimes they would have to eat leave to survive. She was way over 60 years old. The historian mentioned it was that toll on her body in that valley, which really ended her life. Which this land ended her life. And the Prophet wasallam was there. And she said, wherever my husband is, I will be with my husband. I will not leave the side of my husband. Imagine, you're over 60 years old. You have to live in a valley. Sometimes you have to eat leaves to survive. But this is why Khadija radiallahu anha status is what it is. One day, Jibra'il alayhi salatu salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, Khadija is about to enter the room. Give her the salams of her Lord. Allah sends her his salams and give her my salams. Imagine, somebody sends a salam, somebody prominent, we get so happy. Allah, tell her, her Rabb sends her her salams. And then tell her that Allah has prepared for her a house in Jannah, which is made out of rubies and pearls. And there will be no loud noise there. And there will be no tiredness there. I was thinking, why this condition of no tiredness? You know why? Because if you tire yourself in this dunya for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have eternal abode of aram and raha and rest. Khadija radiallahu anha was a woman who tied herself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, Allah has prepared for a boat where there will be no tiredness. No tiredness. When she passed away, only one part of his wives that the Prophet sallallahu lowered into her grave was Khadija radiallahu anha. No other wife is it recorded that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lowered her into her grave besides Khadija radiallahu anha. Why? Because it was the Ihsan. This was a woman that the Messenger of Allah spent his life with. In his most difficult moment, she was with him. And the Messenger of Allah never forgot people's Ihsan. He never forgot people's Ihsan. If you can forget the Ihsan of your parents, I'm telling you the problem with you. Because you're a Matlabi. You're number one, no, but you don't care. But the Prophet Sallallahu life shows us that he never, never forgot the Ihsan of Khadija radiallahu anha. After the Battle of Badr, one of the captives at the Battle of Badr was the son-in-law of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the husband of Zainab. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they will have to pay his ransom as well. So Zainab radiallahu anha now from Mecca sends the ransom. Zainab is a Muslim, her husband is a disbeliever, he's fighting against the Muslims. And she sends some expensive, all the expensive items she has, she sends them. 
so she can ransom her husband. And the Prophet Wasallam opens the bundle. And he looks inside it. And he sees this necklace which belonged to his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha. And she had given it to Zainab at a wedding. And the Prophet Wasallam began to cry. He began to cry in the remembrance of Khadija radiallahu anha, the woman who was there for him through thick and thin. You know, subhanallah, look how many wives the Prophet sallallahu had. None of them ever complained about him. And I know you're thinking, bro, Sheikh said they're heavy on us brothers today. Well, there's only brothers here, that's why. Maybe if there were some sisters in front of me, any sisters? Because, you know, we have to be careful nowadays. People identify as all sorts. But this is the reality. Honestly, let me make it this clear. The reason that many of our sisters are messed up today is because the boys messed up before they messed up. There's a time no, gir no, no girl would, no sister would have a boyfriend. Boys started having boyfriends. Then the girls thought they'd do it. No girls went to shisha lounges until you went to shisha lounges. No girls went to discos until you guys went to discos. No girls had, had wape and drugs until you guys had it. We opened our entire doors. And now we're saying, oh, sisters are bad. The sisters are a problem. True. I'm not denying it. But who's to blame? Who started the rut? So the Prophet wasallam cried when he saw the necklace of Khadija radiallahu anha. You know, subhanallah, Fatih Makkah, imagine this. Imagine this, Fatih Makkah, the Muslim, it's now the time that the Muslims are returning back after 10 years, 13 years of persecution in Makkah, then 10 years in Medina, driven out of your homes, and now you're coming back as victors. You're victorious today. All the Quraysh just kneel down in front of the Muslims. None of them fight the Muslims. And they ask the message of Allah, oh, message of Allah, we're going into Makkah, your home place. Where do you want to live? What do you want to make your home? He said, erect me a tent by the grave of Khadija. And then they enter Makkah and everybody's there. The mushrikeen are there. The Muslims are there. The most happiest day in the life of the Muslims. They've taken over the Haramain. They're back home. And the message of Allah is with the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Imagine how much work he had to do. And in the distance, he sees this old lady. And he leaves everybody. And he walks up to this old lady and he takes off his cloak and he places his cloak for this old lady. And everybody's watching. What's going on here? Who is this old lady? And the Messenger of Allah sits with her on the happiest day of the Sahaba radiallahu anh, for a very, very long time and he just speaks to her. And then he gets up and he comes back and Aisha radiallahu anha says, Oh Messenger of Allah, who was that old lady? The message of Allah said, it was a friend of Khadija and we were remembering the days of Khadija radiallahu anha. And then from there, the message of Allah went to Jannah to Mu'alla to the grave of Khadija radiallahu anha. And he goes to the grave of Khadija, wallahi, and he gives a khutbah, which is just amazing. He stands by the grave of Khadija and he says, this was the woman. When everybody shunned me, she took me in. When everybody disbelieved in me, she believed me. When nobody cared about me, she cared about me. When everybody deprived me, she was the one who assisted me. And then the Messenger of Allah said, Oh Khadija, you lighten my burden. Oh Khadija, you lighten my burden. Khadija lightened the burden of the man who had the greatest of burdens. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why, brothers, 
Marriage ain't a joke. I am telling you, marriage ain't a joke. How, why we have so many guys divorced nowadays, brothers and sisters, why? Because you never thought about your marriage. You were more concerned about your Lambo and your Lenga. Not about how you're going to spend the rest of your life. What's on the menu? What hall are we going to have? That, that's what you were concerned about. Never did you think that this is half my deen. That I'm taking somebody else in my wedlock. That I'm taking somebody's daughter. And I need to treat somebody's daughter like I would want my sister to be treated. Nah. That I'm, that I'm taking somebody else's daughter. And I'm a mother and I'm a father. And I want to treat this new daughter-in-law like my own daughter. Because I want my daughter to be treated like that. No. And the message of Allah said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسي None of you can be a true believer. None of you can be a true believer until he loves for his brother and sister what he loves for himself. You want your child, you want your son to be treated like a son and not son-in-law. You want your daughter to be treated like a daughter and not a daughter-in-law. And you treat your daughter-in-law like she's some alien. And then you say, oh, there's a problem. I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is that you're, you're half a human being. That's your problem. You've got no insaniyat in you, let alone, you know, you're a Muslim rasikh. That's your problem. You die for your own children and you treat other people's children like they're dirt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate the status of Khadija radiallahu anha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring Khadija and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us pious spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us pious children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a source of sadqa jariya for our parents. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children a source of sadqa jariya for us. Barakallahu alaykum.